Do I look more like a gardener with a hat? Like I know what I'm talking about? No? Fine. No to the hat. What are your adventures? Have you had this happen to you? Or maybe you have experienced this. Isn't she absolutely beautiful? <laughs> if you like plants and you are a nomad or planning to live full time as a nomad, this video is for you. Hey friends, I'm Claudia. I started solo traveling last year and about four months ago, I started transitioning from married life to singlehood. I'm also transitioning from living in a house to living tiny in my RV full time. And I have to confess, I love it. But like most things in life, there's some trade-offs. For example, I had probably over a hundred plants of all types and sizes that of course I couldn't take with me. However, in the same way that you wouldn't leave your pet behind, I couldn't live without at least some of my plants. So I managed to beautifully fit about 50 plants in my mini, my RV. experience for me and a lot of adjustment for my plans. In the process, I have lost a few due to the extreme weathers that I have been and me over or under watering. Or sometimes I go through bumpy roads and at the end of my trip, I go to find out that I have a big mess waiting for me to clean up. So I went through a few bumps and this is what happened. I'm gonna say this is a fail. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I have a lot of work to do. My mirror is shattered. Okay, let the cleaning begin. I have tips on watering, lighting, fertilizers, type of plants that are best for traveling and securing them. But to put it all in one video, it would be too much, maybe too long and maybe even boring. So I thought of breaking it into parts. And today I would like to talk about the laws about transporting plants from one state to another, which I had no idea there was such a thing. And also securing the plants so they don't make a big mess as you travel which is the number one question that i had when i shared my plans in social media i believe that after a few failures i finally have a system down and i'm happy to share that with you because after all that's what i want my channel be about learning and then passing that lesson to you so you also may learn so let's get to it. First, I contacted the USDA. You have reached USDA. Which directed me to the State's Department. I followed by an email and directed me to review the CDFA. I emailed them. He confirmed the prior information and directed me to check out for additional guidelines. The bottom line is, the soil must be from a commercial nursery and one must not drop the plants off anywhere. Like bringing some as gifts would be a no-no. 
And there are types of plants that are not allowed into some states because they are prompt to certain pests. Bringing plants from abroad have a different set of rules. <laughs> Secure the soil, I like to use organic materials. For example, I use organic paper towel. I have also used the thicker reusable blue paper towel. They both work equally well. I rip a piece of paper towel, roll it, and tie it around the edge of the pot. I lightly push it down, then I water over it. I think that using the towel helps filter the water somewhat. Then I lightly tap it down again to make sure the paper towel is set in place. Another organic material that I usually have around are wine bottle corks. I cut the cork into small pieces. Sprinkle them over the plant and secure it with non-toxic glue. I have also used eggshells. I usually use them as nutrient for the plants, but they also work as a soil sealer. Cracked glass is another great option to use. To secure my plants, I use a wide variety of different things. When I have a permanent spot for a plant, I use double-sided VHB tape because it's super strong. I have heard that museum putty is good too, but I haven't tried it yet. To secure the copper pipes of my shelves, I use small rubber bands around the hooks so they won't jump off if I go on bumpy roads again. I put my smaller pots inside a shelf that presses against the copper pipe so there is no room for them to move around. I also like to use these wire strings with this fuzzy cover. They come in different colors so you could get creative if you want. You can find them at the dollar store or any craft shop. They're flexible, you can link them for extra length or you, cut, you can cut them if needed. They're very playable and firm because they're metal. I use pressure as a way of securing the pads. I group them and place as many as I can in the same area. Then I fill any tiny gaps as to not allow any movement. I also save those wire ties that come with most packaging and reuse them as ties to secure my plants. I like to use these tiny metal hooks to hang my small and light pots. They're quite strong for being so small and you can hang them most anywhere. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you like my plants and uh, maybe one or two tips were good for you. I'm going to prepare another video and I would love your input. Tell me what do you want to know about traveling with plants? You pick the subject, I'm ready to make the video. And maybe we can share some tips. You tell me in the comments. Thank you for watching and I hope that you come back for my next one. Thank you. Ciao. Hey.